Good evening and welcome to the Forum Thread Podcast number 64. Uh, I am your makeshift host, Mr. Fusion, um, back after being out sick for a while. Um, tonight I have Zap45. Hey. Nobod. Hey, everyone. The Sweet Man. Hello. And our special guest from the Maniac Agenda, Tony Gonzo. What's going on, Tony? Hey, what's going on, guys? Thank you for having <laughs> me on your show. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Joining us. Yeah. Really a pleasure to be here. Um, one of uh, my friends I added recently, I did a, a little shout out on our Facebook page, you know, just seeing who was in our area, and Alex hit me up. It was like, hey, I'm from Philly. Like, oh, really? Yeah. Cool. We just started talking, and he invited me to be here tonight. So, wanted to hang we out. Actually, we even have another Philly member on our uh, podcast. He's not here tonight, but on other podcasts, there is. Uh, Tijin Lee is also from Philly. Well, he actually lives in Philly. I live in Chatsford. Oh, cool. That's cool. He's currently in transit, I think. No, either he's in transit or he's prepping to head out for Austin. And uh, I know uh, Alex just regular podcast listeners can know it's, it's he's referring to nobot but uh you said um nobot had mentioned that you were all you were you're a fan i mean i don't know if you're a fan but you've watched red versus blue right oh of course yeah okay I love, he actually did a um a remix for uh elo 4 that was really popular and, uh, xbox you know gave it out and everything on their social network so yeah that's really cool Cool. Actually, I can give you guys a link, and you can give it out to your listeners as well for free download on you give it like a website or anything. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, just uh, what we do normally when we list the podcast, we always put a link dump on our on the website. So um, if you want to just hand it out, you can say it now if you want, and then um, put a link later on, and we'll post it into the, the link. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, it's on our SoundCloud, which is. Uh, soundcloud.com backslash the maniac agenda which is pretty simple but to get a direct link to the track I'll give you guys a link and you can post it on your website cool and your website is maniacmusic.net correct? yeah it's also available there as well it's like right on the front page you go to maniacmusic.net and there's like a little free EP that has some remix and I know Alex uh, briefly mentioned to us uh, before the podcast just about your music but if, if you could just you know give us a little rundown of, uh, of what you guys do and, and yeah. kind of your, your, where, you, where your direction is when it comes to music. Yeah. Well, we're an electronic rock band, so we infuse elements from electronic music, mostly bass music, such as like dubstep, drum and bass, trap, like a whole bunch of different genres. Glitch hop, that's one of my favorites. And yes. we use that with rock and metal music. And then we also do video game soundtracks. Uh, we're most known for being co-producers for the Metal Gear Rising which we did with Jamie Christopherson, Logan Mater, and Platinum Games. Cool. That is pretty cool, actually. Yeah, so we did a lot of like, the boss battles and collaborated with you know some of the artists, the singers on there with that. And then you know we do remixes for video games, like I mentioned before, the Halo mix that we gave out. And then we have original music that is, is very similar to the same lane as you know the tracks that we do for the video games. And so do you guys yourselves make the uh, the remix packs that are put out under Maniac Agenda? Some of them we do. Others, we, they're sponsored packs where people will, like, send us stuff, you know, and we'll put them in there. And it, it really varies. We just get our content from different areas. Sometimes, Like I said, sometimes they're sponsored packs where, like, either a company or another artist will supply it or we'll put some of the stuff in there. But usually there's content from us that we create. One of the things you like to do is say you have like a song and you're going forward with it and then you kind of like lose inspiration on it and it just sits there on your computer. One of the things we like to do is to give it new life. Maybe that inspiration could go to somebody else. So we export out all the stems and all the sound design and stuff that we use and we just put them in a sample pack and give them out to our fans so that they can you know take inspiration from well, them. That's actually how I became a fan of the Maniac Agenda was through all your remix packs because I myself produce kind of. so. Cool. Awesome. So I hope you made use of them and oh, a lot. Your <laughs> creation. Well, it's great. I mean, like you said, fans of the music, and everyone has to start somewhere, right? <laughs> Indeed. It's actually great because back when we started, like we started making music in the early, I would say like 
late 90s. We didn't have YouTube, any packs or any of this stuff. It was just like you had books. <laughs> you would read books or happen to know somebody and who did music too, which was a lot more rare th those days. And you would just, you know, go and just build it from there. But now it's awesome. They have like tutorials for anything you want to find on the internet. And there's so many people making music and to bounce ideas and feedback off of. It's actually really exciting. I, I really like it. I think that's just basic for every internet thing these days. Like I'm a self-taught photographer now, basically all just from the the manual plus YouTube and other online sources like Canon.com. You can look at tutorials on how to, you know, only focus on a certain color when you take a photo. So everything else is black and white except for blue or, you know, things of that nature. And that's, it's just really cool to see evolution of creativity from the birth of the internet till now when it comes to song making and photography and video making and things of that nature. So it's, it's awesome that you guys take the time as content creators or music or musicians, I should say, to share that uh, resource. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Shout out to Canon.com. <laughs> Actually, yeah, that's funny because um, I started myself as a hobbyist doing um, video and like, photography and stuff like that. More so video, like messing with After Effects and things of that nature just to create, you know, music videos and stuff like that. It's That's like cool. a hot right now, but, you know, see where it goes. But it's cool. I just go on YouTube, find the tutorials. So it's like all the information is at our fingertips. It's really cool. Definitely. That's uh, Zach's uh, uh, bandmate right there. Yeah, he, he uh, he's vocals. He's a very... Uh, uh, yeah. dog. He's, he's a, a very dog. <laughs> blue, come here. What kind he's of dog a boxer. is blue? He's a boxer. Box. How big come is here, he? Buddy. He's, I want to say, like... It reminds me, did you hear about that metal band that has a parrot as their, like it's Oh, yeah? Parrot. What? No, but that sounds really? awesome. Does yes, it it's funny. Oh, you can look it up. And they, like, perform and everything, and the parrot, like, does, like, death metal screams. Wait, oh, isn't there a no, death I... metal band that does have a dog as the lead singer too? I wouldn't be surprised. I could have sworn I saw something like that on the Howard Stern show a few years back where they were playing tracks and it's a death metal band and the dog is howling the whole time. The band is called Hate Beak. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. Yep, yeah. Hate Beak is the name of it. Yeah. I heard it, I was like, what? I gotta hear this. And I went and listened to it and it's like this bird going, <laughs> Over like this, like really heavy guitar riffs and everything. Death like, chord. <laughs> and does the bird yep. actually sing at the right time? I don't know. I think it just kind of just freestyles, or maybe they just have it. Like they they, they do something to get it to start making noise. I don't yeah. really. Know. They probably <laughs> play like a trigger chord. He's, he's he reacts to the chords. Not a Pokemon stick. According to their Wikipedia, their sound has been described as a jackhammer being ground in a compactor. <laughs> so whatever that sounds like yeah I don't know if you're into that kind of thing I guess and at the very like bottom it says we do bar mitzvahs yeah. <laughs> we do bar mitzvahs I don't know I'd be thrilled to see that at an event that I went to I mean I, it'd probably sound terrible but I mean they're what, trying Jack something to come back here? yeah <laughs> that's probably the allure around it though yeah. that sounds like a piece of like performance art yeah <laughs> Very avant-garde and fancy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have two guys that are going uh, to RTX uh, in the next few days. <clears throat> I know I've spent a lot of time talking about it in the past. I will not be going after all. Um, I think, I don't know if it was mentioned uh, at all, but I've been yes. under the weather the I last few weeks, and I'm trying to get myself right. And at the, at the behest of my wife, she said, you know, you're really not feeling great. I don't want you to go to Austin, and then you get sick, and so um, I'm, we'll, I will not be at RTX this year, even though it's it's only a two-hour drive away, I will not be able to make it, so I'm a bit bummed about that, um, I will be there in spirit, and hopefully next year I'll help be a lot healthier, and I can make a pig of myself, so, definitely, <laughs> but, um, so I think we mentioned this earlier, uh, pre-recording, what, um, no, but when you're you're going on Friday morning, so you're flying straight out of of PA, and you're getting there, and you're just gonna hit the I'm ground going running. To, yeah, I'm going to like 
Tallahassee, uh, not Tallahassee, Tennessee, Tennessee first somewhere. I think I'm going to Nashville first and then going to, going through t- Tennessee. Yeah. yeah. Sweet man, why, why, why are you, why are you not going to RTA? Okay, because you have, you have a commitment to your, to your, you have, you're like, you have commitment to your country, right? To defend your country. Yes, so, I do. Yeah. Boo. Yeah, I'm not allowed in America on the Boo. 4th of July. Really? No, nah, I'm just kidding. I've been there a bunch Canadian. of times. Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> no, a lot of America. They wanted to Actually, gloat earlier. What, what is this yeah. you wanted to gloat about? Go so, ahead. oh yeah. So, uh, a couple months ago, or I guess yeah, a month and a half ago, I was uh, off doing an exercise, and uh, we were working with some Marines. And uh, so, whenever you get like Canadians and Americans together, especially military people, you start like the pissing contest right away. And uh, anytime that happens, a Canadian will bring up the War of 1812, which is the only time Canada was invaded. And we won the hell out of that. And so while I was in uh, Alberta, we were talking about this. And one of the guys is like, no way, America's never lost a war, blah, blah, blah. And he's going nuts about it. And uh, I shut him down like the whole time. So he went uh, to find like an internet on his phone, like a signal, so that to he find could look an up, internet. find, uh, find internet. the internet. You know, it's out there somewhere. But So he could find enough signal to like look up the War of 1812. And he comes back like an hour later, and he's like, uh, well, actually, according to this, uh, the War of 1812 was considered a draw, blah, 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 and uh, he wouldn't let it go. So every time he's like, tries to say something dumb about Canada, we're like, well, we still beat you that one time. <laughs> and, uh, today, one of my buddies uh, posted a thing on Facebook of this song from uh, a Canadian band called Three Dead Trolls in a Baggie. Uh, and, uh, the song is called Fly much America. better than Brian Adams, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Well, Three Dead Trolls in a Baggie is kind of like a parody um, parody band. They make uh, a lot of comedic got songs. Rucka Rucka like, Ollie. Kind of like Mr. Bumble? Uh, maybe. I don't know. Like that Lonely, Lonely Island. Island yeah. Lonely Island. I that's guess. More common yeah. Reference. Rucka 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 Rucka. Most popular songs is about uh, how they hate Toronto. Um, and like it eventually goes on to like how the rest of the country sucks too. Uh, really funny, but like the song you put was uh, yeah, it's really funny. Um, but it's about like the War of 1812 and how we burned down the White House, which is true. And uh, yeah, I'll, totally I'll I'll give Canada the fact that they burnt down the White House and they quote unquote won the that one war that they were involved in once. It's kind of hard to boast bomb. about. Uh, we won. Uh, Two and the Boer War. And I mean, you were involved with like reinforcements and stuff. You were involved with like we two thousand troops. There were a million people in the military during World War One, and there were three million people in Canada. That's one third of the population was involved in the war effort. Well, to be fair, the other two thirds were out ice fishing. So. Well, somebody had to make. <laughs> they were a bit busy. So they somebody had to get the farms busy and and uh, break up the ice so it didn't get too thick. <laughs> I, I honestly, to be fair, I, I kind of like Canada just for the fact that they're, they'll back us up when it comes to their involvement with like World War One, World War Two. I just don't think they should have no, that's, Independence Day. You have it, uh, that's my thing. Whoa, from a tough wrong way around. They literally Canada, have our back, so, yeah. Canada joined World War One and Two before the U.S. did. America, the U.S. Yes. was like, eh, I don't think we're going to fight. We'll just leave it alone until, you know, Pearl Harbor dragged you guys in. But... Yeah. We like you look at uh, the invasion of Normandy, D-Day. The Canadians were the only ones who fulfilled their day one objectives there. Not the British, not the Americans. Uh, we are like credited with the most involvement in liberating the Netherlands. Um, the Netherlands. We needed that. <laughs> yeah, well, let's free a neutral nation. They were neutral. They <laughs> yeah. gave up in like a week because they got. They stuck. appeased Hitler. Yeah, they, they were pussies <laughs> yeah. and backed off. Uh, I like the way he said it. <laughs> Let's free a neutral nation. <laughs> it's not Switzerland, like. <laughs> Fuck Switzerland. But more importantly, yeah. I, I I don't really care about your involvement and blah blah blah. I care about your independence. <laughs> Why? Like you. You don't deserve an independence. So, like for a metaphor, for example, let's say England or Britain or the UK is like this really, you know, good-looking, handsome dude, and America and Canada are, are, you know, very hot dames, right? So, you're you're the gal who's like Britain's, like you know what? This this is getting boring. I'm done. Go ahead and have 
whatever you want, you know, we're through. America was the girl Britain wanted, okay? She she he fought for us, but at the in the end, we're like, fuck you, you're a dick, and then we left. Also the so, British didn't know how to ice this shit. I, I, I metaphor... basically trying to say that you were Britain's pity fuck. That's what that's exactly. what trying to say. Yeah, your metaphor exactly. is flawed. <laughs> that that applies did to you, Newfoundland. How did Maybe. you fight a single battle? Did you did you fight a single battle for your in, your independence from the tyrants known as or formerly known as UK? We well, that answer really would tired, be yes. But we fought smarter, not harder. Uh, because in Canada, they did they it, it politically, the and <laughs> they uh, asked for it basically. Like, there's three, <laughs> yeah. there's, here's a little history it's lesson. My point. There's, there's three main dates that you have to look at when you're talking about Canadian independence. The first was July 1st, 1867, which is the date of the Confederation of Canada. There were three provinces, I think, and that was when we officially became a self-governing nation. Uh, and then in 1933, there was a statute of Westminster, which granted Canada more autonomy and is the reason that during World War II, uh, Canada declared war a couple days later, uh, which was more of like, we were going anyways, but we're going to like, oh, we're doing this on our own. We're not just okay, getting sure. dragged in like yeah. the first time. And yeah. then the last one was on July 1st, 1982, which was when we patriated our constitution and basically made it so that the queen is like just a figurehead and doesn't actually have any control over Canada. So anymore. you guys just copied Britain. What do you mean? They did the same thing. England? They're still there. They didn't yeah. separate from anything. I, I just see it as, oh, no. sorry. It would be really nice if we could have our own land back. I'm, we're so sorry. Could we just? Okay, there were plenty of Scots <laughs> there, but not everybody sounded like that. You're True. Kind of, yeah, you're kind of Scottish and German there. Yeah, right? I kind of fucked that up. You know? I mean, the first uh, prime I'm minister was really... Scottish, but... <laughs> So yeah. I'll let that one slide. And let's not forget the but, other important date is May 1st, 1996 in Canada. Is that Maple Syrup Day? No, that was the <laughs> release of Curb by the band Nickelback. So, oh, oh, don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't you said in Canada. Canada's cool because, you know, they give out grants to, like, artists and producers yeah. to, like, music. Like, you can apply, and you, they'll give you, like, all this money to do, like, a music video or just, yeah. like, to help you. I was like... America, they're just like, oh, go ahead, have fun, good luck. There's like more Canada's and more like, good music coming out. From it's Canada. just you know, it's it's a reflection yeah. of the educational system in this, the public education system in this country. Because I have a niece who went to Full Sail University, yeah. and I don't know if you know what that is. It's basically yeah. like an ex accelerated education for music, uh, uh, basically media production, so forth. Is that um, in Florida? Yes, yeah. in Orlando, and right. she walked away after getting what's called the bachelor's um, of, of a year and a half of schooling and show production, and she's working at a pizza joint right now. And yeah. she has a six-figure loan. I went to college, and I majored in broadcasting and a minor in business, and I probably paid, even though, yes, I'm old and it's archaic now, but I probably paid um, a, a quarter of what she paid. And um, and so it's, it's ridiculous. It really well, our, is. Well, our most expensive uh, university tuition is somewhere around eight to nine thousand a year, and that's the most expensive schools. Well, in the that's country. because your country taxes fifty percent ish of your wages, so that's made up. You can't, you can't, you can't directly compare. Oh, our our loans are only this much when your government takes half of what you own or what you earn, and then go makes that go towards welfare programs. Well, we have the wealthiest middle class in the world. And uh, if you look yeah. at what I, a member of the military, uh, compared to anybody in the states in the military, it's bullshit. Yeah, I, I I'm not gonna lie. Way more. Yeah, it's it's total bullshit. I'm tired of all these backhand deals and of white old men talking in rooms, dealing out death to people who are supposedly serving their country. It's fucking yeah. And cash anyway, checks while they're doing God that. Damn. That's it. Um, yeah. There's this band. <laughs> from Montreal, which is in Canada, um, and they're called Chromio. They're uh, not yeah, super big, but I don't know if you guys have heard of them or not. Yeah, we played a music festival with them at Camp Fisca. Yeah. yeah, Yeah, they just released a new album recently, I think a couple months ago, 
and it's sick. I love it. Yeah, cool. they, have, they use those cool vocoders. Like, yeah. It's really cool. I just saw a thing today. They did uh, live at Daryl's house, which is, I don't know where it came from, but I just saw it on YouTube, and they, uh, I guess Daryl Oates does this, uh, or Daryl Hall. Yeah, it's Daryl Hall from Hall and Oates. There's a series with like different musicians where they like come hang out at his house for a while and like do um they just like play music some of his songs, some of their songs and it's it's really cool shit. Uh-huh. I would yeah, suggest getting into that if anybody's interested, I guess. That reminds me, funny side note, when we played Camp Bisco we like locked our keys in the car and Chromio's light guy, the guy who does his light rig, like helped us like he to like pick the lock of our car. Oh, yeah. So yeah, they have very useful people on their staff. I know how to yeah. pick locks. <laughs> I don't know why that would come in handy other than that, but hey, hey came in handy. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Just at the right time too. I bet. Y'all, were you done with your set and you were ready to no. go? No, we just got there and we locked them in the car and we we're like, <laughs> oh no. So we're like, and the thing is, like these festivals, they 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 go for like four days. So some yeah. sometimes if we have like a break in between, like playing. Well, like, a lot of it was the first day, so we didn't even get to unpack or anything. So we're just like stuck, and it happens to always rain. We're like, because it's up in state New York. When I'm talking rain, like, think of like torrential downpours. The ground is muddy, like, so it was looking like it was about to rain, but then they came and like saved us, and we got everything like our camp set up and everything. So where's uh, where's that festival at? It, it was up in um, Mariaville, New York. It's like. I'd say six hours from Philly. It's like in the middle of the nowhere. It's like really far and like 30,000 people come out or some crazy number, 15,000. I don't know. It's like a crazy amount of people come out to this festival. It's, oh, changed it's near through. Schenectady. Yeah, it's changed through, uh, over the years. Like at first it was like a, kind of like a, I would say like a jam bandy electronic hippie festival kind of thing. But then yeah. got more EDM as it got bigger. So, yeah. Um, yeah, no, but it's really cool. Like the vibe is really cool up there. It's yeah, crazy. yeah, for sure. I'll bring someone there, and they're like, wow, this is like a whole different world. It's like you're literally on like another planet for a day. It feels like so. Oh yeah, yeah. So you, you said you've been, like, you're into you've, that been kind of... you've been making music for a while now. Yeah, actually, yeah, that's kind of funny because we're talking about the whole college thing and that. Yeah. Um, I actually went to college for communications and public relations uh -huh. but then what happened to me is like oh I, don't, I couldn't find a job or anything and I was like wow because actually having your bachelor hurts you sometimes <laughs> but uh so I was like okay I'm just gonna just pursue music and then I just started doing it and doing it and doing it and it just got to the point where we just started doing it full time and now you know we do we do video game soundtracks we do shows and tour and then that's pretty much our life. It's a awesome. lot of fun. It's a lot of work, though. But it is, like, it, it, it's, it's a great, it takes a lot of work. Like, there's a lot of overhead that you need to do at first. But then once you get, reach the threshold, then it, then it like, all the, so like all the doors unlock. And then it's, like, pretty much whatever your imagination can think of, you can do. That's awesome. Uh, I have a question, Mr. Gonzo. Uh you f do you feel like if you were given a large grant of money earlier on in your career, would that help you or would that hinder you and, and make you less who you are right now or today easily, like if you didn't go through that schedule? I would say easily it would have hurt me because here's why. During those, those early years, like there was a point when we were selling CDs on the street to people to pay rent, like literally going up to people saying, hey, $5 for the CD, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, we do our spiel and everything like that. So it, learning that, the, that kind of, like, personal interaction with people and having that much confidence in your music really helped us learn a lot of essential skill sets. And then, like, we learned how to use the Internet. Since we didn't have big budget, we had to think of really creative guerrilla marketing tactics That's that cool. really played out and helped us grow our fan base with next to nothing. So... I would say if we got that money up front, we would have it would have been wasted. But yeah. now I feel like having that now, it's more in a position where it would work. Which is why a lot of bands, especially if they're younger, they have managers because they have someone who had those years of experience behind them, so they know what to 
right decisions to make and when and how to spend their money, which is mm-hmm. why we're we're a self managing band. Like we don't need a manager at this point. Uh, well, we could use one for certain things just because there's so much stuff to do that like we want to be able to make the music too. So it's like if you're doing the marketing, the promotion, and all that stuff, it's good to have someone else there to take on some of the workload. De- definitely, the, you know, dividing the workload does make a lot of things easier. But I, I think it's, you know, I feel like having a struggle and, and having a sense of earning what you accomplished makes you a better, like, artist, in my opinion. Like, there are a lot of artists I truly res- respect, and I, you, you can hear it in their, their tone and how they make their music that is, it shows that they, they worked hard and now it paid off and they're hearing the result of a dream and a pursuit of that dream. So getting a grant right off the bat is, you know, I don't know. It could be, it could be beneficial to someone who's already had years of experience and then going into it. But I also feel like it's difficult. Like, I don't think it's some, I think that kind of thing should be earned and not just given away. Agreed. Yeah. If, like I said, if they had someone that is on their team, they have like a team of people that know what they're doing, then it's okay to get a grant and they'll be fine. But I do agree, I think, from an artistic perspective, that you can hear it in the music. There is a difference. Like, if you go and listen to our songs, any of our, like, our original songs, figure it out and all that other fun stuff. Are about becoming, like, struggle. One of our songs is called A Beautiful Struggle. It's about, it's, you know, it's a struggle, but it's beautiful to go, you know, through all these steps and development, you know, as a person and as an artist. So I, they, I do agree they go hand in hand together. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> when you hear a lot of the young artists that come out now and that they're coddled from day one, you can, you can almost hear in their writing the lack of, uh, I guess... Genuineism, uh, giving a shit, giving a shit, like, and being genuine about it, and like it, Justin Bieber, for yeah. example. Oh, I was just gonna say that. I mean, you could say <laughs> him, you could say a lot. You know, Miley well, Cyrus is really mainstream people, but I mean, it's it's a different, it's different in pop music than other demos, but in genres. But what I'm saying is, is just the young artists that come up now. You could hear in their music just how there is no, you don't hear about the struggle, and if you do, it's just. It's not believable, you know. These, these, they're, they're having, they're, they're having to earn their stripes on the fly with millions of dollars in their pocket. So I got too many cars. Exactly, <laughs> and so it's like we, when you hear the music, you're like, I really can't buy into the to the lyrics because it's this not genuine. And like you said, you wrote a song about the struggle, and that's a genuine song because it's 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 what you lived through and. That's why a lot of artists, you know, growing up, and you hear the old school artists like Bob Dylan, they write these lyrics, and it's it's always about the struggle of life, and it, it just it's amazing how through time you can always tell which artist had it easy and which ones had it rough, you know. Like Johnny Definitely. Cash is one of my favorite artists. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and throughout his entire career, everything he wrote was just about the grind of life, and then you you read about it, you you read his autobiography, you're like, man, this guy had it rough from day one, not only just personally, but in, in, in his career, and it's, it shaped his music, and that's, that's, that's where I appreciate, you know, you say you're, you're glad you didn't get a grant because it helped shape your life, uh, your career, and, and that's, that's something I can appreciate, because when I hear the music like that, I definitely want to uh, know that I'm, 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 I'm taking something from it that's genuine, you know, it's not something that a ghostwriter or a songwriter wrote and said, okay, now this person can sing it for or they could produce yeah. it, you know. You know what I can't stand? Is, like, people that sing about, like, all the hard shit they've gone through when they, like, clearly have never done any of it. Yeah. Never like been Drake. through that. Like Drake? He's like, yeah. he's on the bottom <laughs> from here. Yeah, if he was, like, a little kid who was on the grassy, already yeah. having the dollars and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And he's, a lot of these artists, I don't feel like they're artists at all. They just have a team of three or four songwriters and they're there and then you have their the writers names yeah after that if you look at the credits I can tell you and actually because we produce people and there's a lot of these some art some of the bigger the high profile artists they have teams of people that like create 
everything for them, like from the mm-hmm. ground up, pretty much. Like they do have some say into it, but uh, like uh, not all of it is what you actually think it is. I've been on some of the teams for some of those artists, like that. But mm-hmm. yeah, you you can tell like you can hear it. And it's, there's definitely a more. I would say it, it sounds more like real and believable. Yeah. But I think it takes someone of a trained ear. But some people can if they're listening for it. So, but some people don't want that in their music experience, which is why stuff that isn't as difficult does always you know, well. You know, people just what people want in music is different nowadays. Because now, back in the days, you would go out to the record store, you'd be excited and go and buy a tape or a record. Nowadays. People just go online and download it, stream it off of YouTube. They just stream it. So it's like well, steal it off of YouTube. And, and a lot of people aren't even like they don't make an album that you can just like sit down and listen to it all. You know what I mean? Like there's or it's all singles. Case, you can't listen to it at all. It's yeah. It's like yeah. It's, yeah. Everything's just singles these days. And like that's I like. Uh, I mean, going back to Chromio, um, I got one of their earlier albums. And I threw it in my car because it was just like I could listen to the whole thing front to back, and every song had something in it that I like to listen to. And yeah. uh, it's like more and more rare these days that a band makes something like that. Oh yeah, because you know when I was a kid, you, you'd find you'd find an album like I know people don't like it. I think it's a very underrated album, but that first Stone Temple Pilots album, Core, I really love it. Oh. And, Right. And it's a, it's an album that you can listen to from start to finish and enjoy it. You know, there's old Led Zeppelin albums that you can yeah. listen to from start to finish. And it, I mean, I think I mean it, it sucks that we're that's I like where we are in the digital era in terms of I can put my entire ca- half of my music catalog on my phone and have it yeah. with me whenever I want. But the downfall is I can't just hop on a vinyl or a CD. And just sit there and listen from start to finish, and just relax and listen to the same album. It, it's it was almost like a calming effect, you know, mm-hmm. knowing that I pop in a CD or, or an album, and I, you know, I listen to the entire thing. Like I'm gonna listen to Penny Lane, okay, okay. I yeah. pop that in, and I'm just gonna enjoy the whole album and and, and not have any worries. Now it's like you we we be, we all become ADD, ADD in a way in that yeah. shit I got to create a playlist for the next 2 or 3 hours I got to I have so many so many music songs that I could put this one in what about this one and this one in? and then you almost go crazy trying to create this playlist and you spend like an hour and a half of your free time and you're like shit I could have read the book when yeah. in the past I pop on a I pop on a tra- uh, a CD and I just listen to the whole thing and, yeah. and read yeah. you, even like uh concept albums like don't really do it anymore but I mean, Pink Floyd was oh, really I love that. Like, I remember, I don't think I'll ever forget, when I was in like grade 11, I think, I was in physics class in high school, and we were doing this, uh, like a lab with lenses and lights and stuff, so like the whole, all the lights were out, and we had like candles burning all over, and my teacher had a turntable in the back of the room, and he put on Dark Side of the Moon, and That's it was awesome. like, yeah, it was one of the like coolest days I've ever had at school. That sounds like the coolest teacher ever. I'm yeah, surprised he, you- Give out like little uh, what is it, um, fruit punch with LSD in it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he, Don't drink the he had like the crazy like <laughs> manic scientist haircut and everything. Like he was super crazy, dude. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I can actually I speak on why that uh, part of the change is, because from a marketing perspective, with an artist to get like a lot of coverage and stuff. Now since music is a lot more like. I would say the industry as a whole is very kind of like fast food market. That yeah. Instead of putting out just an album, you need to spread it out over the course of a year so you always have something new coming out, always some new announcement, always something fresh. While well, you're on tour. To yes, to help bring everything you know together. So like if you just put an album out, boom, there's your album, there's all your tracks, then you go on tour and tour. And, you know, they only want to talk about that album for once, but then maybe you do a music video. You've got to keep the things going. But if you take your album and spread it out, you can release a song every, like, couple months or, or to keep the machine going more so it's easier to do it that way. So while you're doing tours and doing all that, you already have that stuff, you know, backlogged, already finished to, like, kind of go. And then you just put it all in an album together after you go through that run of song. So... So you may be just doing singles, and they weren't actually supposed to even be on an album. So, but then at the end, 
you just take them all together and put them on an album and then just sell that as an album for that period of time, which is, it works for that perspective, but it also the downside is what you guys were mentioning, that they don't sound like they belong together because a lot of them songs weren't created with that in mind. Or even but, in the same time frame. So, yeah, exactly. But how many these days are going to be played like 20 years from now, and people will be like, oh, yeah, I love that song. Like, I remember when it came out. Like, yeah. very few. I mean, I'll listen to, like, they have oh. classic rock stations, you know, where there's, well, like, I, all it is yeah. is music from the 70s and 80s. I, I so there's really like not asking, much rock music, but yeah, obviously that, in hip-hop, and uh, there's a lot of large names that are getting more and more popular by the day, like mm-hmm. Tech 9 I love him. We just did a show in Missouri. Yeah. They were loving him. But yeah. You did a show with Tech 9? No, well, no, 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 we didn't do a show with him. We did a show in oh. Missouri. Actually, his, one of his DJs, Strange Music, was um, Mr. Chris... Christopher opened up for us. That was really uh, cool. He he's a tour DJ yeah. for music artist. But they love him. Cool. He's really good. He's probably one of my top three favorite rappers. He's and my I'm, favorite. Honestly, I feel like rock albums were like telling of the story, like the or in country, like Johnny Cash and and, the, and Pink Floyd and, and people like that. It's like start to finish, it was like it. It was all one song, but spread up into little chunks, you know? I feel like it has to be, I think we're, I'm not sure, if, I'm just trying to be a you know, devil advocate slash, I don't know, objective, but overall, I feel like it has to do with the genre as well. Like, there are a lot of genres that, you know, that it's okay to not make sense song to song, I guess, right? Or, yeah, it doesn't have to be one long story, not necessarily. Yeah. Some yeah. of them, some of the, some of the greater albums are, but Definitely. it doesn't have to be. That's Definitely. Okay. And I've heard newer albums that do that, and it's like just gets super weird. Like there was this album I had years ago by The Streets, which is this like British kind of hip hoppy rock stuff. I don't really know how to describe them, but um, and it was like a concept album where it was like the guy was talking about this experience that he had or whatever uh, from start to finish. And, uh, you know, some of the tracks were really good, but there were other ones that just like would like just mess with my mind. Like I didn't even know what I was listening to kind of stuff. <laughs> like white noise kind of? Um, not really, but it was just kind of off. Like it didn't really sound like anything else that they, that was in there. And they had a couple, like I think one of the last tracks they played through it like mm-hmm. sort of one one ending to the story and then it like rewinds and like and it starts from the beginning of that track again but it's like the other ending like the the first one was like the bad ending and the second one was the good ending kind of thing interesting so it was like it was like white and dark and yeah then, uh, like they did it was a really like interesting experience i guess i see think, what but. you did there light and dark speaking of yeah. dark Hello! <laughs> Whoa. Oh, hey. The question, how drunk are you right now? <laughs> I've, I've had time to, to sober up. I only had sake during dinner, so that, that stuff's like drinking Kool-Aid. Ladies and gentlemen, our <laughs> normal host, Dark Wendre, has uh, graced us with his presence. Dark, joining us is Tony Gonzo from The Maniac Agenda. Tony Gonzo? Oh, Tony Gonzo. Yeah. As in... Gonzo from the Muppets? No. No, actually, that's just what I put on Facebook because, like, I don't want people like going and searching and Facebook all that. Digging you know, into your, your, your privacy. Do. Yeah. So no, my actual name is Antonio Gonzalez, which is really weird because you know I don't look like a Gonzalez. But if you see my brother, who's also in the band, he looks very Latin. And then if you saw our family uh, okay. together, standing together, it's like I have my dad's face, but my mom's complexion. And he has like my mom's face with my dad's complexion, so they're like, "Oh, I can see that." It's also so, a good thing you call yourself Tony Gonzo because there's like two different Anthony. Go- or uh, changing your name actually does make sense, and I suppose the, uh, having described that, it does simplify things a little bit. Yeah, so it just makes it easy, and then plus, like most people think of Gonzo from the Muppet Babies, or like the <laughs> so I get that sometimes when I was growing up, they would call me that. So I was just like, you know what? That's cool. I'll just put that on there. It's a good Some stage cool. name, man. Yeah. Actually, my stage name is it evolves from one of my old names, which was 
DJ Satisfaction, which I don't go by anymore. That's when I was producing. Because I was sort of as like a hip-hop producer back in the day. I actually was working with Root West Love here in Philadelphia. Ah. I did a show with him on VH1 called, uh, um, what was it? It was the Hip-Hop Honor Show. And then there was like a segment on it called The Score, which him and I were on where we were creating like the theme song for the Hip Hop Honor Show, which they used for it. That's kind of where I got my start. And then I did that under that name, DJ Satisfaction. But then I just switched it to SAT, which is soul and technology, because, you know, there's like a soul in our music, but it's electronic. So you kind of like fuse the two together. So I usually just go with that as far as that. But my personal name is Antonio Gonzalez, which is kind of funny and very common. Actually, this is really funny. There's an international criminal that has the same name as me. So anytime I get money like wired to me or anything like that, they, uh, it takes forever, and I have to go through like this crazy uh, like interview. <laughs> so, excuse me, sir. You share a name with a criminal, so uh, we've just got to make sure you're who you say you are, and you're not actually this guy here. Makes is that, sense to me. Is that actually, criminal one of the same guys in the MOV? They're all criminals, so, right? It's actually <laughs> something that's like, racist. Before one, where I got, I I didn't have my my driver's license with me. And I got pulled over, and they couldn't identify me, and I gave them my name, and they put and I almost ended up in his jail. <laughs> that had to be awkward. <laughs> Yo, they strip, they they like strip searched me on the side of the road and everything because they thought <laughs> I was this criminal that had like a if, thousand dollar reward out for him and everything like that. It's actually kind maybe of they funny. were just interested. Um, so I was like, I, yeah, I if you over. actually, if you actually were, what? don't you think you'd give like a different name though? Yeah, that's the thing. Like, yeah, yeah. You'd have to be genuinely stupid to be a wanted criminal and to uh, just be like, oh yeah, this is my name, officers. Look me up. I've got a criminal record. They're like, what's your name, sir? Antonio Gonzalez? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you ever see that? Like, <laughs> like, as far Did as you guys are... D, D's nuts. Just use that. <laughs> you ever see the, I'm sure the that I'll do it like, there's a dude who escaped from a prison or something, and a cop pulls him over. He's, like, running down the road or something, and the cop pulls him over, and he pretends he's a jogger and, like, gives him some, like, fake name and stuff. And the cop's like, okay, well, have a good day, sir. And he, like, drives away. That happened How'd that get on? Wait, no, that you, was in the States. Uh, wearing okay. prisoner attire, like, having just no, escaped? Had, like, sweat clothes on or something. I don't know. I can't remember exactly. And how was this caught on film? Uh, so it was from the dash cam. The dash yeah. cam. Yeah. Well, I had to be back for that police officer. Be like, dude, oh, you talked to the guy. You let him go. Yeah, you will oh, never yeah. live that down. Yeah, I said he did not get life. the pay raise that quarter. <laughs> God, the shit he must get every time he walks into that station would just be ridiculous. Oh, oh man. Man. Officer, Miss let Mister, let him go. Yeah. 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 Looks <laughs> any joggers today? So dark. <laughs> yeah. Are you ready? I think so. I I think I've I've got everything ready. I've got my I got my RTX. T- uh, I think I think I'm ready. I've got my my cell phone charger and you I've got my Nook be charger. Ready. You won't be you ready. Got your stick you of juicy fruit. fruit. I don't have a stick of juicy fruit. You need that, man. The taste is gonna move you. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so you're you're flying out tomorrow. <laughs> so is Mr. Webwave. He'll be getting to the airport around the same time you will. I don't know if you saw on Rooster Teeth today, he posted, a, actually an hour ago, a pissed off uh, journal about his financial aid at his school screwing him over. He thought he was going to have money now, and it turns out they, they're not going to have it for him. So he's going to have to penny pinch a lot harder than he expected. Oh, know, that so. sucks. But um, he mentioned having to pay for transport from uh, the airport to downtown, and I wanted to let you guys know, even for those listening, um, well, if you're listening, by the time you listen to this, it'll be too late. It'll but, be too late. But <laughs> just for future second. reference, there is a metro, uh, met, uh, Capital Metro is Austin's transit, uh, city transit, and there is the 100, which is the, the bus, that a shuttle bus that will take you from the airport, and it'll take you through, up and through downtown. So, and it's like, I think, it, it used to be a dollar... I think uh, Barbara... Shuttles are basically free, right? What's that? I said shuttles are basically free, aren't they? I mean, it's it used to be a dollar, but I think Barbara's uh, brother recently 
went to visit her in Austin, and uh, he said I think it went up to like a dollar fifty or two bucks. But Which it's is a shop. They only take cash for those. They, I do believe it's cash. Yes. Yeah, they have change. There's change. Well, you can get the change. Like usually when you go wait for the shuttle, they'll have that the 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 change change booths uh, right outside before you step out. So. Or just yeah, buy an overly yeah. priced bottle of water. So you know, um, there is a, there is a shuttle that'll take you from the airport, and it'll go through downtown. Which means usually when they go through downtown, they stop in front of the convention center. So. All right. Then uh, yeah, because he and I, I. I messaged him earlier today, and our planes land at just about the same time, so yeah, we're, we're just going to meet up with each other at the airport and, like, be each other's travel buddies, just so, you know, you're not wandering around downtown you guys wait alone. guys day there at the airport, so I can go with you guys? Uh, no, no, I don't, I don't think I will. Uh, hell, even if, even if you were getting there the same day, I'm not sure we would wait for you. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I wish Tijin Lee was, uh, leaving at the same, at the same day I was. Because we live with both well, Billy, why is he but he's not. On not. The podcast tonight? Yeah, what's his excuse? He's a dingleberry. He's leaving. He's leaving tomorrow, I think. So he's leaving tomorrow then. I'm, yeah, he's I'm just leaving prepping. tomorrow too. But yeah, so, I've got to, I've got to be at the airport. Time is it? I've got to be there. I've got to I've got to leave the apartment at five in the morning. So I've got to get up at like four forty, I think. When when do you touch down nice. in uh, Austin? I. Shit, now you're going to make me pull up the I think you schedule. told me it was like 11.30 or 11.45. Damn. Yeah, the plane changed a little, a little bit. Let me just okay. double check. But yeah, that yeah, sounds about right. Was doing fusion, or doing errands. Yeah, I'm bummed. I'm not going to be going. And I actually had talked to Lozelda about possibly even... 10.20. ...me uh, swinging by there just to say hello at least a day, but... Um, my Should wife swing has by been... Sunday, so um, so that no, I have a ride. No, no, I have plans on Sunday now, <laughs> but I was gonna swing by like either tomorrow or Friday, um, just for the day to hang out. But I have not been medically cleared by my wife, so <laughs> so pretty much you're grounded. You're not going anywhere. Well, I told her, and she was like, "Are you serious?" I said, yeah, I'm gonna go and just go for that. She told me at you know while we were working yesterday, she, she emails me and says, "Look, I don't want to be an asshole about it, but." She goes, you're still not, you're still not better, and um, I don't want you to go over there and you get really sick, and then you know you be stuck over there, and I'm stuck here, you know, and I have to find a way to go get you or whatever. So, <laughs> True she, story. she's playing. She sounds cautious. like a real pragmatic person there. Do you want to hear an interesting piece of military code? Let's hear it. So on the radio, if you ever talk about call sign Niner, that means like the commander. That's like the boss, right? And so something that we say a lot is Niner Domestic, which is like your wife or whatever. And so it's like, oh, sorry, I can't do that. Niner Domestic's calling or something That's like cool. that. That's pretty funny. Neat bit of trivia there. Yeah. yeah. All right, so okay. what have you guys talked about so far since music, I joined? Mostly. Yeah, a lot of music. Just, you know, progression of certain albums, like how some albums in rock and, like, country and stuff like that are more story progression and not random EPs and singles like a lot of bubblegum pop and bubblegum rock are. And how we've advanced from being able to enjoy a full album to just downloading singles and yeah, we also how it's both about a bubblegum. pro and a con. I really like a lot of um, things nowadays are, like, giving you a code for, like, digital downloads and stuff. Like, if I buy a, an album or, like, a CD or something, a lot of the time I'll get, a like, a little slip in there that's like, yeah, go to this website and you can download the album so you don't have to worry about doing it twice. Because I don't have, like, a disk drive on my uh, computer anymore, so even if I wanted to, I couldn't rip it to my uh, to my computer. You don't have a disk drive? No, man. That's pretty That's pretty hardcore. That is. Already, yeah. already getting rid of the optical drive. Oh, uh, I'm, not, I'm not that brave. Neither am I because most <laughs> OSs are, uh, are are media based, and I'm not going to I'm not going to rely on the flash drive for my for my Windows Seven. Just oh, I have Windows Eight. It's way better. Windows Eight's oh, yeah. pretty good. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> yeah, Windows Eight's whatever. great. Don't get me started. Me? Don't get me fucking started. I like Windows Eight. I, a lot of I still have Windows Seven. I haven't used Windows Eight yet. A lot I of my hate Windows don't 8. like it. I, I don't know it's, what like. It's not. Uh, you'll you'll prefer Ableton on Windows 8. Yeah, 8.1s or dot one, I should say, is way better. Well, and they're, they're already pushing for Windows 9, which is supposed to correct all of the tablet 
functionality to Windows 8. So basically, they're well, just going to go back to Windows 7. Well, my yeah, computer basically point, is would, a tablet, so... What's yeah, I would rather tablet? download Ubuntu and put it on a new machine than put Windows 8 on there, just because yeah. Windows if 8... I, if I didn't have, like, a tablet-style computer, then it would be a huge pain in the ass, but it's, uh, it's not too bad the way it is right now. Yeah. You mentioned that it. I would like it for Ableton. What does it do different with Ableton on Windows 8? Does it do anything when you different? Use, when you use RAM on your computer... For, uh -huh. uh, it puts more into that, and it won't like lag and stuff when you're like making dub stuff or something. Yeah. Like sometimes when I when I was using Windows Seven on a uh, FL Studio or Ableton or something, uh, yeah. I would it would get really choppy at times. Even if, especially if I was looking at someone else's dub stuff and stuff like on yeah. FL Studio, it yeah. would get really choppy at times and just like mess up and start getting grainy and glitchy and stuff. And yeah. that was really bad because it just was not enough RAM. Even though I had enough RAM to run it, it's but once oh, I cool. got a Windows Eight. All the RAM was being used more properly, and everything was just running great. Yeah, the the, ma the RAM management system is weird. Also, did you upgrade your program at all at that point? Because I know um, one of the, the older Abletons, there, there was actually a RAM that it, you, no matter what amount of RAM you had in your computer, it could only reach a certain amount before it start like, shitting out. Oh, can I, can I curse on here? <laughs> no, yeah. It's not the fucking, you know. <laughs> Shit, fuck. All right. I do not Before know. we start messing up and everything like that, so uh, yeah, because I, I know that's one of the things with Ableton, it starts to do that. But um, well, so, I'm fully FL Studio now, so. Oh well, well the, the cool thing is with um Ableton, you can freeze your tracks, which takes away all the processing of the VST in itself. So like we were able to fill like actually some of our earlier songs, we would they would have like a hundred tracks and all this craziness. But we built it on a Pentium 4. Like, we were making it on a Pentium 4. Like, it would still act bad because there was so much going on, but because we could freeze the tracks, it, it made it to work on at all. Yeah, FL Studio Space, um, I started out using that. That's where I started with that. And then um, my brother used it at Ableton, and then um, we wanted to start making music together. So, this is before I think they had a rewire in them, because this was a while ago. And then we yeah, just of course, start, now we have rewire. It's great. Yeah, you can like have all the programs working as one unit, which is awesome. So, but yeah, then just I don't know. It really doesn't matter what you're using. It's just whatever works and speaks to your creativity, really. Whatever. That's cool. Is your dog snoring? What's going on? He he's just he's a pathetic mess sometimes. So that's a dog yeah. I'm hearing. Yeah, I was trying to figure out what the hell that was. That was Zach. Yeah, that was me actually. I'm Zach playing, actually whining. has been recently diagnosed with narcolepsy, and he does. Oh, like, Jesus. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> Perfect timing. Just yeah, drop drop asleep right there. Yeah. So well, when I stare at him, he doesn't whine. But when I look away, he just starts whining again. Well, I'm really. I would like to say I'm really bummed out that I will not be going. But I know. Those that are already there from the podcast are having a blast, uh, especially the newlyweds. Yeah, get, super jealous. Well, hell, yeah, and if no one saw, like, Lo Zelda, within four hours of landing in Austin, she was so shit-faced she couldn't feel her own fingers. So, <laughs> I'm a was little she, jealous. Was she shit-faced, or was she just Hot. full from full food? No, no, she said she, she had a lot of food, and she had a lot of drinks, and she couldn't feel her fingers anymore. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that that's that's shit face. You know, when you're so drunk yeah. you can't feel your fingers, you're pretty much at the end of what you can handle. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So and the extremities yeah. start to go. Literally, numb. because you the probably heat, can't pick up the cups anymore. The heat probably doesn't. <laughs> no, the heat's so, brutal. I was on uh, Rooster oh, yeah, Teeth's website and I was looking for uh, a, the list of panels, and I once again I couldn't do it last year and I couldn't do it this year. I I failed at finding it. it is is it actually on? The, Caleb the put something up. Just download the RTX application, bro. I don't there you go. want to download the app. I have enough apps on my phone. Well, it's one, then you can delete it after. Uh, let's see. The schedule, and I know I am sorry for the people on Twitch that are going to have to see me pause on Minecraft here, but um, anything in particular you're looking for? No, I was just looking for the uh, you know the the list of all the all the panels that were going on. I clicked on the RTX tab, and it I was just no. saying like a Go basic page. Go to rtxevent.com and on that uh, page is a schedule. And they that's what I was route. doing wrong. Yeah. Or take the time to download a fucking five megabit app, you 
fucking moron. I don't want to download that the app. app. I want download. I want the <laughs> app, but it will not download for me. But uh, what kind of phone do you got? I have an Android. It's the okay. T-Mobile Prism Two. Okay. Have you updated your OS recently, or? Uh, not too recently, but it is the most recent OS for it. Okay. Well. Or, or fiddle around with your like approval setup for like updating applications and shit, because there was a lot of like glitchy things here and there for the application. Like it wouldn't connect or link up to Twitter. So if I wanted to post my schedule on Twitter, it wouldn't link up properly. So it could have the same issues. All right. All right. Well, I'm gonna be watching. I'll be popping in and out on the Twitch feed. I know uh, Kathleen Zolk is going to have a panel. And I actually wanted to watch it, but I, it's the same time as the Achievement Hunter panel, so I think they're gonna they're gonna twitch that first. So. Uh, yeah. Tough decisions are gonna have to be made. Yes. What panels are you looking forward to, Dark? I have not looked at the schedule yet, so. <laughs> That's so what who I was am I following around all RTX? I don't know. <laughs> what I did last year is I just kind of made it up as I went along. I'm like, I kind of want to go to this panel, I also kind of want to go to that panel, and then I'll look at which lines are the most full, and then decide, okay, I'm not going to go to that panel, because it's got a hell of a long line, so I'm going to go to this other panel over here. Well, and like I so said, her, her, her panel, she's she's having a panel at the same time as uh, Achievement Hunter, so, I mean, if I, well, I just want to go to that. You want to go to the <laughs> Achievement Hunter panel? Yeah. Well, I'm going to give you some advice. You need to be up and in line. Let's see, what time is the Achievement Hunter panel? It's. I don't know. I can Which day is it? Right now. It's probably going to be on Saturday. I'm looking. Uh, Achievement Hunter at 10 a.m. You need to be at the convention center at about 6:30 in the morning and in line by no later than 7. You're going oh, right. to have to sit there for three hours to be sure you get into the panel. Well, one of the one of the things that they've been cracking down on Fusion that Lo Zelda was talking about is like. No waiting in line longer than like before than an hour. Like before yeah, the panel they said the guardians like are going to like kick you out of the little lines that you're trying to form until an hour before the oh, event they're happens. Do, they're going to do that this year. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Like so no lines until it happens. I'm not here for the achievement. It was a panel, fucking nightmare. I got to the I got I arrived at the convention center at six thirty in the morning, and I look right in front of the escalator, and there are about fifty kids just sitting there, just sitting around, and I in a line, and I looked over, I said. What are you guys waiting for? And they all said simultaneously, Achievement Hunter. I was like, great. So I called, uh, I called Chris and I said, uh, Chris, we already have like 50 or 60 kids uh, by the escalator waiting for Achievement Hunter. And he's like, God damn it. So what panels yeah. are going on before Achievement Hunter? Quite so a there few. One, there's quite a few. Uh, let's see. VFX. Well, good, that means I get to see them. Digitally Animation blowing up stuff. I think. No, that's the same time. Oops. What do you want to be what when you grow the, up? Hunter panel. What is the like the achievement hunter panel? Where they discuss that on that one? Like what topics? They just talk about hitting achievements on the on games they play. That's pretty much. I didn't go to last year's, but I'm assuming that's what they do. It, it's kind of more social too. Like they'll they'll talk about their let's plays and and other things like that. But they'll they'll try to do their best on focusing on achievements. Uh, and if I you're mean, unsure about what Achievement Hunter is, Achievement Hunter is basically Brewster Teeth's uh, little gaming group they have. And they do Let's Plays and Playthroughs, Achievement Guides, just basically a lot of stuff uh, about video yeah, games. Easter egg stuff, yeah. Pretty cool. Uh, I'm, I'm seeing this one called The Art of Podcasting, Traveling the Technological. Maybe we should listen to that one. We <laughs> should probably. We probably need Get it. Get some pointers. Just so you know, Tony, we had actually petitioned to have our own panel, and we were going to call it the Forum Thread Podcast Panel, How Not to Do a Podcast. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. Uh, they weren't the plugers didn't give us our panel. We're going to try again next year, though. Yes, sir. Damn straight. Do you, want, do you want to come on to our panel next year? <laughs> <laughs> there will be more people on the panel than in the audience. <laughs> no, we, we joke about that, but that the same thing happened two years ago with the My Little Pony panel because that that year there were maybe like ten or fifteen people. No, I really eight. enjoyed the My Little Pony panel last year. It was really entertaining. <laughs> and, and last year it was huge, right? It wasn't huge, but there was a, it was almost completely packed. There was only probably two dozen chairs that weren't filled. Dude, I want to be there. See, in the year before, it went that that panel went on while they were doing the the podcast. Oh yeah. So they were making jokes about how oh yeah, there's like four people over there right now. Oh uh, J 
JJ told me that I need to go to wherever he's going to be for the uh, the recap that they do at RTX. You're going to be in the recap? Well, yeah, he, he, he told me to be there. So That's awesome. Be there. He handpicked you. No, I asked him and he told me he told me to be there. Okay, well if you're uh, you know like in front of a camera or something, be sure you pimp us out, buddy. Yeah, be sure you. Oh, he can wear our shirt. Dude, dude. We can all go. We can, we can all go wear our shirts. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. Lazelda said that the panel that she's going to be on, she's totally going to wear the the, uh, the the TFT T-shirt okay. just just to uh, do a little bit of pimping for us. Yeah. Like I, I do. There was a reason I loved you, Lazelda. You you go get you go get your she, pimp on. She gets it. She gets it. Maybe I should tell TJ to print out Tony a uh, a uh, TFT shirt. Well, hell, after after this, you know, eventually we'll have to actually have like T-shirts Store. available for people to buy and shit. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't Start think that'll be a problem. Money. It won't be too hard to. It's really easy to set up an online shop. I've talked to TJ about it a, a bit because I'm I have my no own business stuff. curiosities. You don't know. You don't know, man. Right. Tell you our what our Ken's, five uh, diehard fans will buy our stuff. Ken's new project that he's working on, he actually wants to make a server uh, from, you know, a, a server that anyone can, uh, that we can use, uh, I don't know, maybe we could even, uh, like, make our own web domain and host it on, like, a homemade server. That would be interesting. Yeah. Oh, that so he, want, he wants to out. host a domain. Oh. Well, Ken's I didn't have enough money uh, in the pool to afford a, a cardboard cutout. Uh, like everything that I've got, I'm going to have to use for food and for uh, for, for travel. Oh my god. god! It sounds like that dog is like having he, sex every, or something. If I don't look at him, if I if I'm not looking at him, he'll look like Hi, blue. What, what's going on, bud? What's going on? Hey, dark. What? Bring blue over here. What oh, is Shabu Shabu? <laughs> I didn't know what Shabu Shabu was until earlier today. Did you see the picture of yeah. Ken eating like, it? Looks so, like a chicken. And it's served. You have this this bowl of boil of like uh, it's not boiling, not quite boiling, but um, you have this bowl of hot water that's mm -hmm. brought over an open flame to your table, and yeah. then you have a platter that's set down next to it with an assortment of vegetables and this thinly sliced th thinly sliced uh, beef. And so then you put whatever it is you want into the boiling water. The water also has uh, like two big things of kelp in it to add flavor. And then uh, once you put you put the vegetables in, you put the uh, thin slices of beef in, which cook really really fast. And they have like two different types of dipping sauces that you put in. One's just one's pretty thin and kind of salty, just to add a little bit of flavor to the meat. And the other one is a creamy um, like sesame seed type sauce. And right. you dip the vegetables into that. And then you are also given a bowl of rice. So then you put the vegetables in the meat. You've dipped them on top of the rice, and then you eat it that way. So shabu, would it be shabu. fair to say that so it's, it's like meat. Japanese fondue? Yeah, that's that's kind of kind of what it is, the the Japanese version of fondue. It's a, it's a staple Japanese uh, dish. Sounds delicious. It was, it it was pretty good. good. I'm not sure I would get it again because I, I, I like sushi a lot better. And... Mm. Uh, and just the vegetables were just kind of boring to me, but I it was definitely a fun dish because you know you have the the open flame right there in front of you, and you get to put everything you want in there, and so it's it's a good conversation piece because you're actually interacting with your food the whole time because you're actually like cooking your own food the whole time, so it's definitely an experience. I highly recommend doing it at least once, even if you don't like it, just do it for the experience because it's fun. Huh? Play with I'll your have food, to look it up. Please. Play with your food, and then you can take a picture, like I did of Ken. He's making such a funny face in that picture. Yeah, it's pretty he, weird. He was actually more excited than than I was. He's like, "This is." He's like, "I've got such fond memories of eating this he's as a kid." Eating. Yeah, his mom used to make it uh, when he was younger. She was like, "Now you get to try it." Like, yeah, this is fun. Well, that's good. Are you gonna? Is he gonna miss you, or is this gonna be a good quiet time away from? Oh, you read RTX. Uh, I think it's going to be a little bit of both. Like, uh, like I think in the, in the downtime, I'm going to miss him because he, you know, he was here last year, and people are going to be like, "How's Ken doing?" I'm like, "He's not here right now, but uh, he's got a couple parties that he's got to go to, and uh, he's got some work stuff that he's got to get done. So he's going to keep himself busy." I also downloaded um, the Mortal Kombat uh, original trilogy one, two, and three on Steam. And we got the Xbox 360 remote that works with the computer now. So um, he and one of his coworkers are probably going to have a Mortal Kombat uh, Battle Royale while I'm gone, too. Nice. That's awesome. 
So he's he's gonna keep himself busy. <laughs> I tried funny. playing Mortal Kombat against him uh, day before yesterday, and neither one of us were particularly good, but he kicked my ass. I, I genuinely suck at that game. Well, I was I was at the Microsoft Store a few weeks back for an, it wasn't an extra life event. We just went out there to just hang out with the kids. And on Friday nights they have a Killer Instinct tournament on the Xbox One. And my God, have I gotten bad with Killer Instinct? I got my ass whooped. I'm I always kidding. liked Killer Instinct better than Mortal Kombat. I probably because it lets you play as a Velociraptor. Mm-hmm. I really, like, uh, I really like that. Yeah. <laughs> my favorite was Orchid. I don't know why, but I always preferred because I, I could really lock into that that spinning kick combo she would do at the end. Of yeah, Man, she was she crazy. Seventy-two hit combos and all that stuff. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I, I hadn't played it in a long time, and so I was playing the one version. We were at the store, and I said, yeah, I think I can hit that 72-hit combo. And right when I said that, bam, 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 I get into about 55, and the guy breaks. He's like, God damn it. Like, <laughs> combo yeah, breaker. Yeah. And I got uh, my ass. You're, you're it's like those Tekken that, combos. Though. You get hit like 50 times. There's no getting up from that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, no, you're done, son. Unless you're the raptor. I can see a raptor surviving that. So we've got like an N64 at work. And it usually just sits there, but sometimes, like, during lunch and stuff, we play. And it was, like, right at the end of the day today. And um, one of the guys at work was like, oh, I'll totally school you on this or whatever. And uh, he said he was, was going to beat me at Super Smash Brothers. I was like, all right, man, whatever you say. So we, like, loaded up. And uh, we played a, a stock match with five lives. And I, didn't, I think I had 30-something percent damage on me. Like, I Damn. totally schooled him. I, have I was like, he's like, I think I might life. have misspoke here. I'm like, yeah, you did. It's That's been a long ass time since I played the Nintendo 64 version of that game. That's the one I started with, and then after oh, switching yeah. over to the GameCube, I tried going back to the 64, and I'm like, holy shit, I suck at this now. Oh yeah. And like the, I was at my buddy's place trying to do the GameCube one, and I can't even yeah. walk with it. Terrible. That's actually kind of funny you guys mention that because we have 64 studio, and that's like one of the games that we. But like, say, we're, after we're done in the studio, we want to, like, take a break or something. We have, or if, say, we're arguing about something, we go and take a match. We'll go and have a match. <laughs> at, uh, now, but the thing is, my brother he used to run, um, like, uh, cons, video game conventions, and he's really good. So usually he just kicks all of our asses. <laughs> usually, uh, if it comes to that, he wins. But he'll be like, you know what? We'll do this. It'll be you two. You can put a computer player on the hardest, all of you versus me. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll still win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. But yeah, Smash Bros. is a good that, way wait. to blow up some steam if you're you're yeah. you're pissed off. That's, oh, that's yeah. really. It is a fun game though. I do like, but it isn't. The other ones are definitely much better. I would say in terms of gameplay and graphics and stuff. But it always there's like the novelty of it to just have yeah. it play. It's really cool. <laughs> I, I like tried that Goldeneye too, but it was terrible. What was that? You tried it with what? We tried Goldeneye as well, but oh. like the controls oh. were so clunky and like <laughs> it was not yeah. like a fifty-inch screen. That's for sure. For uh, the time, Goldeneye was revolutionary, but after uh, Halo Combat Evolved, there's no way you can go back to like the old Goldeneye controller setup. It's inverted it's bad. controls. Ugh. Yeah. yeah. Gross. Get out of here. And you well, can't. And then, uh, the, the characters are creepy as hell too, because they're they're polygons, but they have like pictures of faces like stuck yeah. on the on the polygons. So they're they're definitely firmly in the uncanny valley. It's genuinely yeah. creepy yeah. to look at. Yeah, Jaws. He looks so creepy. <laughs> yeah, for sure. He's like all te- he has like the teeth and all that, and then yeah. every and the chief. This guy is odd job because he's so short. No one can. I mean, you just he you just run up on people and like you can't get them or anything like that. He was like he was a cheap character. And Jaws, he's like a sitting duck because he was like so big. That was that was one thing cool about that game. I thought they had it so that like depending on the character, like the height was actually different for some characters, which was interesting for that time. Yeah, that was something that you really didn't see in a, in video games before, where you could actually have like a you, you didn't just have a, a standard wireframe you actually had a, a a variety of characters and for the Nintendo 64 uh, with other human characters you didn't really see that even the women were like the exact same polygon figure but they just yeah. had like 
the texture of boobs put on the flat chest. Yeah. So yeah, the fact that they had the unique character heights was they was would pretty cool. Butt crack on their on their chest. Just yeah, to, just to <laughs> put it on the their chest. Oh god. And then Laura it, Croft they changed tried. it all. Oh. Yeah, thanks, Laura. <laughs> yeah. She have just you paved the, the way. Have you seen the new trailer that, that they showed at E3 of the new Tomb Raider? No. Was it all pre-rendered bullshit like last yeah, time? Yeah, yeah. That's it, it. Looks that way, but it's weird how they're making her look like a 13-year-old girl now. I don't really? Know, is Ellen yeah, Page like the a new prequel. model for these video game characters <laughs> now? Is, well, is they that? didn't. They got so much flack about the like over endowment that they went but too far she wasn't, the other But she wasn't major boobage in the reboot a couple of years ago. Yeah, she looked good, I would say. Yeah, in, in I the thought reboot. She, like, I looked, she, she looked normal. I wasn't over the top. But this one, it's 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 the sequel, but Killer. when I saw this the, the, the trailer, I, I thought... It's I a mean, prequel to a I prequel. Mean, are they making her look more prepubescent? I mean, what's, what's going on with that? Wait, I think she's so, supposed to be younger in this one. So this yeah, new one is a prequel to, to the reboot movie. that happened two yes. years, years ago? ago? Yes. Okay, Which I'm, itself I'm, was a prequel. I'm really confused about their strategy now, because yeah. that does not seem like <laughs> a good idea for, for a re- <laughs> Yeah, if you just rebooted the series, <laughs> why make the second game a prequel? You know what the next one's going to be? Star Wars. If they follow this pattern, the next one's going to be Womb Raider. <laughs> womb Raider. <laughs> <laughs> She fought the You're magical umbilical cord monster. The Canadian oh, with the pun, folks. Don't and, and now we know what happened to her mother. <laughs> <laughs> it's her fault. Oh, sorry, guys. Uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm, even though I'm not going to RTX, I'm still taking my vacation. Uh, take it back. But anyway, I was going to go watch a movie tomorrow, and I had thought about watching Transformers, and then I heard... That it is a steaming pile of shit, even with the Dinobots. And My Little Pony reference. It's bad. Yeah, I, I heard the same thing that it's, well, not quite the same thing. Um, one of my favorite reviewers, I actually posted it on our, our Facebook page, the Movie Bob Review, where uh, he's like, it's, it's completely retarded, but I had a good time watching it. So you pretty much yeah. just watch you just watch it blow up. He said he thought it was better than the, the other three live action movies because yeah. they were also pretty bad. Yeah. But he, hearing. yeah, but by no means he I said by no means all. he did not say it's a good movie by any means. Who doesn't like explosions and giant mon- or monsters and you know monster yeah, you just, robots? And don't don't go yeah. expecting to see a plot or any sort of character development. Just go to see shit explode and then see dinosaur robots at the ver- robots at the very end. And My if you go and rainbow and dance. explosion. Yeah, go with low expectations, and you might have you might have a good time. Uh, so that's, of, that's the message I'm hearing. Speaking of Michael Bay and trailers we posted on our Facebook page, uh, expecting did you guys? Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. I didn't see it. I, I see. I've seen it. Follow and our page. I was expecting damn it. Terrible, like really low expectations, and I'm like, you know what? This doesn't look half bad. Yeah, after seeing this trailer, I I went from being completely meh about the whole the whole thing to actually I, I'm kind of excited now. It looks like. He might actually do this one justice. Crossing yeah. my fingers that I don't regret saying that. Oh, that's still oh. there, but yeah. you know, that's just visual. That's just a visual aesthetic thing. It, it, as yeah. long as it's got like good other stuff, then I can deal with the noses. I have a question. What? What's your question? How does wearing a hat hide the fact that they're a turtle? There's a lot of weirdos in New York, man. Dude, yes. never know. <laughs> The yeah, difference between true. Superman and Clark Kent is that Clark has glasses. That's, yeah. I mean, seriously. And the, and and the hair swirl. That hair and, swirl, though. And his demeanor is different, too. He's not a big old melodramatic traditional hero. He's a geeky, you know, very unelegant journalist. Yeah, you're thinking of the Christopher Reeves Superman. Superman, yeah. in general, in the comics, he's the same person. They yeah. pretty much make him out to be the same person in the comics. Yeah between Clark Kent and Superman. So I think Christopher Reeves was the first to kind of Did make justice. A, a total douche yeah. one way and then a total hero the other. So slightly yeah, perverted. Superman though. reminds me of those damn teenage movies from the uh, the late nineties where, you know, the you have the ug- the quote unquote ugly girl who just takes her glasses off and lets her hair down and suddenly she's gorgeous. Oh, it's I like that, that's what that's what Superman is. He's the, the <laughs> ugly girl who takes his glasses off, and suddenly he's Superman. And yeah, everyone just goes along with that, it. 
curly Q. That thing's pretty sick. <laughs> yeah, but the guy is 6'3", 240. Uh, he's going to look the same whether he's a reporter or Superman. So, yeah. Yeah, and it, like, his, should, even like, his reporter suit like was skin tight, so... <laughs> switching to the, the like the spandex he had underneath it yeah. was not. I think they should get fool anybody. <laughs> yeah. They should get like The Rock or like John Cena to play Superman. Did you see? There was if you go <laughs> Google it, there was an SNL skit where The Rock uh, he plays Clark Kent slash Superman and how everyone in the office they they're like, do you, does he really think we don't know? Yeah, <laughs> the guy is six foot four and three hundred pounds and he wears a tight t-shirt and all he does is he changes his class he puts classes on does he really think we're that stupid and so yeah. he, he plays yeah. the oblivious uh superman he comes back in with his shirt half tucked in <laughs> you can see the That's superman cool. costume underneath he's like oh yeah guys so what happened i i missed it i missed out and they're like yeah clark you every time superman comes around you miss out you're never around we don't know where you go they're just like <laughs> they're just fucking with him the whole time you need to see the skit it's <laughs> I don't Sounds think John good. Cena would be tall enough to play Superman. Yeah, well, whatever. I just mean one of those like overly jacked wrestling dudes. Well, there was a time where uh, I mean, when they announced they were going to do an X Men movie, where one of the possible uh, prospects to play Sabretooth was Chris Jericho. I'm oh yeah, joking. Yeah, and that would. And then Chris Jericho got that. Yeah, but th- that was I'm talking about years ago, like in '99, '97. Yeah. Chris or Jericho was the original, original X Men movie. Yeah, the original movie that before uh, Singer and Fox took over. But oh dear God. Yeah. Um, yeah. And actually, I may go watch uh, X Men again tomorrow because I really <laughs> liked it. It was really good. You know, Chris Jericho. Days, Days of Future Past. Yeah, it was Days of good. Future Past is very good. Oh, I'm so out of the loop. I don't even know what's out right now. I miss Spider Man. Chris that. Jericho uh, invented the loop. Hey, Spider Man was pretty good. Yeah, Spider-Man. but I'm I'm like a big Spider Man's my favorite. Yeah, what exactly. I, what Damn I appreciate straight. what I appreciate about this, this Spider Man is the ending. I really he's like a loser last, all around. Whether the last he's in his suit or not, minutes was pretty much dead on what I expect from a Spider Man movie. Yeah, he's all, a genuine human being. Was it better than anything from the original Raimi. trilogy? Spider Man Two, yes. the Raimi, the, the Raimi Spider Man Two is really good. True. Uh, I I mean I like the first two the second the third one was kind of shit but. that's like well known for being shit though like yeah. everyone dislikes that fucking movie it's pretty hard to like that movie well, the, you have to be a really hardcore spider-man fan to I like that though they were he really did not want to put venom in the third movie Raimi. he wanted yeah. to do a fourth movie with venom and they really wanted him to shoehorn him in so he did yeah yeah. yeah, that that was such the, the, one of the biggest disappointments for me because I was so excited that Venom was in there because Venom's my favorite Spider-Man villain of all time, and he's just kind of like an afterthought. I'm like, oh, here he is, and you get a lame showdown where you trap him with sound and like, yeah, oh, that's well, pretty much how he beats him every time. But he's that's, the yeah, anti-Spider-Man, man. You gotta yeah, it, so like, spend to, some more time on him. Yeah, if you look at the, the showdowns that all the other villains got, like, it yeah. was. Just really boring. Like, oh, that's all we get. He makes some scary faces, and and that's it. Like, uh, yeah. well, I mean, heart. It, it would be cool if they did another one, and like Venom came back because that's part of like the comics. Venom always comes back somehow. Yeah. It, Mr. Fusion, in this version or the in the amazing version, was uh, dad was Peter Parker's dad responsible for creating the symbiote suit, or it was no. it an alien? No, it's always been an alien. Well, that's not true because there is an alternate universe or a series of comics where it was actually a creation or of. Oh, okay. You're thinking of the ultimate series, the ultimate line. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That one's very different, of course. In that, in the ultimate line, Peter Parker is dead and uh, a black Hispanic uh, Spider-Man now. Which is Um, cool, by the way. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate the change, but um, the yeah that that one that one was where his parents. If I remember correctly, because I really didn't follow the Ultimate line too much. I like the Ultimate X-Men, but um, the later years of the Ultimate line just got really ridiculous. But I think it, I think his <laughs> yeah. parents were, uh, were, were were either agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or they worked with S.H.I.E.L.D. in that continuity. In that time. Yeah. But um, yes, his dad had created Venom in a lab. But yeah. in, in the quote-unquote uh, main uh, universe, it, it is an... The Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah, it's always a symbiote. Yeah, so.
Okay. I appreciate the amazing movies. I, I like them. I, I think that I think people were giving uh, Andrew Garfield too much shit because they're like, "Oh, great, we have an emo Spider-Man." But I think that he played more of a the dual character better than, than Tobey Maguire did because when I when I see Spider-Man, I think of you know he could be kind of dorky as Peter Parker and then be a smartass as Spider-Man, which he was, and I didn't find that with with Raimi Spider-Man. I didn't. And that, that was probably my biggest. Thing is that, Pet peeve. And and, and Toby McGuire was always crying, always crying. Yeah, I don't. I didn't like either <laughs> character as Spider Man. I don't. I don't like either character as Spider Man. Really? Well, so, who would uh, you have be Spider Man then, Dark? I, I don't know. I, I don't know the answer to that. I just I just know that the the two that I have I I don't like. Now I think I like the uh, the new guy, whatever the fuck his name is, better. Andrew Garfield. Yeah, Andrew Garfield. I think I like Garfield better than McGuire. Uh, just for the fact that you know, I don't like the way McGuire's face looks. He has that <laughs> thing going with his lip. And, um, yeah, and he's just like a, a bitch the whole time, which I, I guess in some respects is more true to the character but uh, in, in, in certain iterations, but it's just very annoying to watch. And, like, the chemistry that he had with um, with the Mary Jane character just was not there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm like, I, there's no way I believe that, that – she even had remotely has feelings for you, or you remotely have feelings for her. Like it was so forced yep. that yeah, yeah I did not buy it at all. Whereas um, Garfield and the chick that plays Gwen Stacy had, I thought they Emma had much Stone. better Emma Stone. Oh. Yeah, I thought they had much better character. They're or, actually uh, chemistry in real life though. So oh well, that's that kind helps. of cheating. I well, guess. they started <laughs> dating because of the movie, right? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. That's what happened. So. And, yeah, I, I don't know. I like Andrew Garfield because I, th- I feel like he has a more like genuine love for Spider-Man. It, did you? Did any of you actually take the time to like? He he did this speech at Comic Con like 2013, I think, where he came up as some like really fake ass like Spider-Man suit that didn't quite fit in a fanny pack, and he came up <laughs> to the panel and he gave this speech about how Spider-Man, you know, you know, inspires us to be good because he is for a lot of reasons like the rest of us and then he took off his mask because of this big reveal and it was really cool really cool because they thought it was just some some guy dressed up as spider-man in it. exactly I, mean, I, I, I i look I, I like it it's not great it's a it was a good movie my my complaint was with this one i think they once again shoehorn too many people in yeah this last movie was ridiculous it was, wasn't it four villains or was it just three? I don't remember now. It was it was four. just the Green Goblin, technically. Yeah. Yeah, but they had the electro, elect- electro yeah. Green Goblin, and then the Rhino. They yeah. advertised the Rhino, but he was more of a cameo character, I guess. You know, like yeah, the true. The joke, the punchline of the sh- of the movie, but I, yeah, but I, he was still in there. Yeah, he was still in there. So I thought it was an okay movie. Um, uh, I don't. I don't think that. I think. They they shouldn't. I'm trying to say this without being an asshole, but I don't think there needs to be a third movie because um, I didn't like the writing too much in this one. Um, yeah, you, yeah, it's it's pretty weak. Like the visual effects have gotten better, but the writing is a little sad. Special effects are great. The 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 the, the swinging scenes were great. Were yes, I'm so yeah. happy to see that they got rid of rubber Spider-Man finally. Like with, uh, in the, new, the two new movies, Rubber Spider-Man does not exist anymore, and I'm thrilled about that. It was yeah. so distracting in the old of the old trilogy. Yeah. Well, I think uh, we're, you, we're at an hour and a half, so we're. I think it's time for us to to go ahead and wrap it up. But um, in closing, everybody that's going to RTX, um, have have a blast. I know you guys will. Um, take lots of pictures, post lots of pictures, and. When we get back next week, hopefully we can have a podcast for everyone. We may have to do an extended, extended podcast so everyone can talk about things. Um, but uh, you cool. guys have fun, and hopefully I will be there next year. And Tony, um, the Maniac Agenda website's maniacmusic.net. Anything else you want to throw at us? Uh, that's pretty much it. You know, the, Everything you can check out on our website, like you said, maniacmusic.net. We're on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, SoundCloud. All of them are at The Maniac Agenda. And, you know, we have some shows coming up. 
I have a special announcement, but I can't say it yet because I'm not allowed to. But we do have a big local show that we're playing here in Philadelphia within you know the next two weeks. So that's going to be on our site and everything like that. Cool. But, uh, yeah. We have so work. listeners, follow them so you can get that announcement when it comes down the pipe. So. Um. Yeah. Thank you for having me. I had a lot of fun hanging out with you guys, discuss the different topics. <laughs> it was a pleasure meeting you today, Tony. Thank you for joining our podcast, and I apologize about my tardiness. Better late than never, though. Yes. Right. And maybe right. you can join us right. another time. Yeah, I would definitely. All the rest of the band members to come. Cool. It'll be a party. Yeah. That'd be, make sure, that'd be a make sure party. you bring a drink. Oh, we will be. We'll drink. We'll, we'll have bring your own beer.